One of my college professors told me about a very simple circuit that anybody could build. It's, it's basically a neon lamp flasher circuit. And uh, that was 12 years ago. And I did actually try to build one back then, but it wasn't successful. I'll get into that later. But finally, I built one and I got it flashing here. And um, the thing about neon lamps is that they need relatively high voltage. I have about 150 volts on all these, all this mess of batteries of uh, alkaline, carbon zinc, and lithium batteries in here. They're all, you know, very old batteries, some of them more than 10 years old, but they still have a decent charge on them. So I'm just, I just put them all on the circuit to give them one last hurrah before they die completely. And there I got it on a voltmeter. You can see it's 150 volts on the battery. And I'm going to touch the terminals here. And uh, first of all, it makes, uh, makes my fingers feel very warm inside. It's like a, a burning sensation almost. But, um, you know, with 100, about 100 kilo ohm resistance here between my fingers touching the uh, alligator clips and it drops down to 140 volts from 150. So there's quite a bit of internal resistance inside the battery bank. But um, it's nothing to sneeze at because I'm only drawing about 30 milliamps average uh, for the, the flasher circuit, or I'm sorry, 30 microamps. And here's a closer look at all these little red and blue batteries down here. It's the EverReady number 411 15 volt carbon zinc battery. You, you, you'd think that it would be totally obsolete, and in fact, I think it is. I did some research, and apparently it's not made anymore, but you can still buy them for a whopping price of $20 each. So um, I didn't buy these. I already had them on hand, but, um, you know, there are more than 10 years old, but still have a decent charge on them, so I'm just going to use them until they're done. And here's the book where I figured out how to make this thing work. I showed, showed this in a different video, but it's the GE Glow Lamp Manual. Everything you ever wanted to know about neon lamps is right in here. And chapter two is oscillator circuits. You can make square wave oscillators with these things and that's what I got going here is this particular circuit just a resistor a capacitor and the neon lamp and it utilizes the negative resistance of the neon lamp in order to get some oscillation going all kinds of really good stuff here you can pause the video and read the text if you want probably will be best in full screen mode but basically the key to understanding this circuit is to look at this graph right here. And let me explain what's going on. This is, this is the circuit I got going over there. And we got current on the horizontal and voltage on the vertical axis. And this line right here, that's the characteristic curve of the, uh, of the neon lamp. The, vol the voltage across it and the current going through it. And you can see that if you increase the current going through it, then voltage reaches a maximum until it starts to conduct and it actually glows and you know actually has the plasma discharge in there on the terminals. And that's when it goes down through this negative resistance region. And if it was just on all the time, then it would just stay down here. Um, but basically for the oscillator circuit, you also have to consider the load line of the resistor. Here's three different load lines. Um, if your load line look like this, if your resistance is too high, then it's not going to turn on at all. It, it'll never actually uh, flash. It'll never actually you know, have the glow plasma inside. If you have a load line like this, which is what I had 12 years ago when I first tried building it, you know, I just use the typical 33 kilo ohm resistor that you would find on any neon lamp these days. But um, basically, it was always on. You know, the voltage would rise up if you follow these arrows here, and then it would go down. It would stay at the end, at this point end, and it would always stay on. But 
to make the circuit work, your load line has to be this one right here, where it intersects the negative resistance region between points P and S. So then the current and voltage follow this path here, depicted by the arrows, constantly going over this loop here, where the light is turned off for this part of the IV curve, and then it suddenly jumps over here, where the light is turned on, and stays on until here, where it's goes off again, and it just keeps going round and round like that, and that's where we get the oscillation. Fortunately, that's not the only graph that there is in this book to help you design a functioning oscillator circuit. There's also all these guys over here. Um, got frequency and capacitance, and then each of these lines is for a different resistor, anywhere from 1 megohm to 15 megohm. And got just got a different chart for each each different lamp and operating at different volts, 100 volts and 150 volts. But basically, the best thing to do is to just build a circuit, play around with the components in order to get the particular frequency that you're aiming for. In my case, I'm just using some old school components here. I got this one mega ohm resistor and a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. It's a little, some, some industrial strength capacitor here. It actually has, the outside terminal is, the outside can is one terminal and then the other terminal is this metal rod going all the way through it. So that's why I'm able to, to hook it up in this particular fashion. But you can see right here on this graph, you know, it's this is, this is not a 5AB, it's something else, but you know, you can get in the ballpark here. I'm using a 1 mega ohm resistor, and it's half of a microfarad, so right around here is where it should be oscillating at a frequency of 10 hertz or so. Um, in fact, this is going at more like 2 hertz, but, and that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted a very steady flash like this once every 1 or 2 seconds. And the flash rate will go down as the batteries drain, but um, if these batteries were all brand new, then I could expect this thing to last continuously for a year or more. But uh, we'll see how many weeks or months I actually get out of these batteries. I might have to replace a few of them because um, they're going to drain at different rates. But that's it. That's my neon lamp flasher circuit. Thanks for watching.